Hi everyone, today we will study about the crop jute. Here we will discuss about the cultivation practices of jute. So now before we go into details, first let's see a bit introduction about the crop jute. Jute is an important natural fiber next to cotton and they are considered as the golden fiber of India. It is one of the cheapest and the strongest of all natural fibers. The fiber has great utility in both domestic and industrial uses. It is biodegradable and eco-friendly. The jute fiber is extracted from phloem tissue that is bass or bark fiber in the stem. It is one of the major foreign exchange earners. Next, we will see about the origin of the crop. Jute belongs to the genus Corcoras, and the genus Corcoras has two cultivated species, that is Corcoras olitorius linius and Corcoras capsularis. The center of origin of Corcoras capsularis is Indo-Myanmar, including South China, and that of Corcoras olitorius is Africa which is considered as primary center of origin with India or Indo-Myanmar region as its secondary center of origin. Next is about the geographic distribution. Jute is cultivated in India, Bangladesh, Egypt, China, Sudan, Brazil, America, and Japan. India and Bangladesh, including China and Thailand, are the leading producer of jute. India is the largest producer of jute goods in the world, while Bangladesh is the largest cultivator of raw jute. India and Bangladesh together contribute about 90% of the world jute requirement. The cultivation of jute in India is mainly confined to the eastern region states that is West Bengal, Bihar, Assam, Tripura, Meghalaya, Orissa, and Uttar Pradesh. Next, we will discuss about the economic importance of the crop. The fiber is used extensively in the manufacture of gunny bags, gunny cloths, and other packaging materials for storing and transporting of various agricultural and industrial products. They are also used in making ropes, rugs, and carpet, etc. Their leaves can also be used as vegetables in India. Jute is an emerging potential alternative source of fibrous material for paper and pulp industries. Jute is also used as a source of ethanol. Stalk strip of fibers are used as fuel and for making gunpowder charcoal. Next is about the classification of the crop. Jute belongs to the family Tiliaceae. Cultivated varieties of jute are grouped under two types of species. They are the first one is Corcoras capsularis, that is white jute, and another one is Corcoras olitorius, that is Tosa jute. Next is about the climatic requirement of jute. Jute requires a warm and humid climate. They can grow within a temperature range of 24 degrees Celsius to 37 degrees Celsius and the optimum temperature being 34 degrees Celsius with a relative humidity of 57 to 97%. It traps well in area with well distributed total annual rainfall of 2500 mm per year. Corcoras olitorius cannot withstand water logging. However, Corcoras capsularis can withstand water logging, but its fiber quality is impaired with prolonged water stagnation. At a temperature below 10 degrees Celsius, no germination occurs in both the spaces. Next is about the soil requirement of jute. Jute can grow on various types of soils. 
the new gray alluvial soil of good depth receiving silt from the annual floods give highest yield of jute. Heavy clay is not suitable for its growth. A soil pH of 5 to 7.5 is considered ideal. It has been observed that clay loam for Corcoras capsularis and sandy loam for Corcoras olitorius are more suitable soil types. Next, we will see about the popular varieties. First, we will see about Corcoras capsularis. Important varieties are Sabusona sonali, Siamali, Vidhan Pad 1, Vidhan Pad 2, Padma, Respa. Next is about the Corcoras olitorius varieties. Important varieties are Nabin, Baisaki Tosta, Basudev, Surya, Chaitali Tosa, Sabitri Tosa, and Sakti Tosa. Next, we will see how land preparation should be carried out. Jute seeds being small and delicate require very fine tilt to get uniform germination. The land can be prepared by plowing and cross harrowing 3 to 4 times by tractor followed by planking. Deep plowing up to around 30 cm is necessary to remove the stubbles of the previous crop as the root of jute crop generally grows up to 30 cm depth. Now we will discuss about the optimum sowing time. Corcoras capsularis sowing starts from late February up to the beginning of March, whereas that of Corcoras olitorius in the early April and continue up to mid-June. Now we will see about the seed treatment. In order to check the spread of seed-borne diseases and to get higher percentage of germination of seed, seed should be treated with any one of the following. Trichoderma viridi at the rate of 5 gram per kg of seed or Carvendazim 50 WP at the rate of 2 gram per kg or Keptan 50 WP at the rate of 2 to 2.5 gram per kg of seed. Next, we will discuss about the sowing methods. Broadcast sowing is the most common method. To ensure even distribution of seed, they are mixed three to four times with well-powdered soil and broadcast crosswise. After broadcasting, planking is necessary to cover the seed and to bring them in close contact with moist soil which helps in germination of seed. The seed may also be sown in cello furrows behind a plow. Now we will see about the optimum seed rate, spacing as well as sowing depth. Seed rate varies with method of sowing as well as species or varieties to be grown. For broadcasting sowing, 6 kg seeds per hectare for Corcoras olitorius and 10 kg seeds per hectare for Corcoras capsularis. And for line sowing, it needs about 4 to 6 kg seeds per hectare for Corcoras olitorius and for Corcoras capsularis, respectively. The olitorius and capsularis zoot are sown at a spacing of 25 cm by 5 to 7 cm and 30 cm by 5 to 7 cm respectively. Next, we will see about manures and fertilizer application. In soil with low organic carbon content, farm yard manure application at the rate of 5 to 10 tons per hectare a month prior to crop sowing is recommended. Nitrogen at the rate of 20 to 60 kg for olitorias and 40 to 80 kg for capsularis should be applied. Depending on the soil requirement, 
22 40 kg P2O5 and 22 60 kg K2O per hectare may be applied. In heavy soil with low to moderate rainfall, all nutrients are applied as basil. In light soil and high rainfall situation, nitrogen is applied in two equal splits, half as basil and another half as top dressing. Next is about the cropping system. The following crop rotation are adopted in jute growing areas. First, we will see for irrigated areas. Jute intercrop with green gram followed by pedi and then potato. Next one is jute followed by pedi and then by potato. Jute followed by pedi and then by gram. Next one is jute followed by pedi and then followed by wheat. Next one is jute followed by pedi and then by mustard. Next one is for rent fed areas. Jute followed by pedi and then followed by pulses. Jute followed by gram. Next one is jute followed by pedi and then by mustard. Next one is jute followed by mustard. And next one is jute and then followed by pedi. Next we will discuss about wheat management. Maximum wheat infestation in jute is up to 3rd to 6th week of crop is to weeding first at 2 to 3 weeks after sowing and second weeding at 5 to 6 weeks of age should be done. Pre-emergence application of butaclor 50% EC at the rate of 1 to 2 kg active ingredient per hectare within 24 to 48 hours of sowing following rain or irrigation is beneficial. Application of post-emergence herbicide like Propaquizafov 10% EC at the rate of 150 gram active ingredient per hectare or Guizalafov ethyl 5% EC at the rate of 60 gram active ingredient per hectare at 21 days after emergence followed by one hand weeding recorded better control of grassy weeds. Now we will study about the topic which focuses on water management. Jute is predominantly grown as a rain-fed crop. Yield is increased if irrigation is provided. One pre-sowing irrigation followed by three post-sowing irrigation results in considerable increase in yield. First post-sowing irrigation is applied at about 15 days after sowing. Jute fill should always be provided with a safe outlet to drain out excess water as water logging results in poor quality gutty fibers. Next is about the insect management. Major pace of jute are yellow mite, stem weevil, semilupar, and hairy caterpillar. Now we will discuss about the control measures. The first mechanism is use of resistance or tolerant varieties. JRO524, JRO7835, and JRC212 for yellow mite. NDC8812 and NDC9101 for stem weevil and semilupar are preferred to avoid immense loss due to insect base. Next one is cultural practices. Optimal that of sowing, proper weed management, plucking of infected leaves before spraying insecticide are to be followed for proper management of jute base. Next mechanism is by chemical control. Spraying of insecticide should be recommended if the infestation crosses the economic threshold level, that is ETL. Insecticides such as Fenvalerate 0.02% or Cypermetrin 0.03% or 
carbonyl 0.1% are quite effective in managing similoper. Cypermetrin 0.03% or carbofuran at the rate of 1 kg active ingredient per hectare are used to control stem weevil. Application of Dicofol 0.04% or Phenacaquin 0.02% proved to be effective in managing the yellow mite. Next is about the disease management. Stem rot is most important disease of jute caused by Macrophomina phasiolina. Anthracnose is of regular occurrence especially in capsularis belt. Minor diseases reported in jute field are black band, soft rot, and hoogly wilt. Jute mosaic, chlorosis, and yellow vein are the viral diseases reported to occur on jute. Now, control measures. First one is cultural practices. Adoption of appropriate crop rotation, deep plowing, clean cultivation, use of healthy seed, seed treatment, line sowing, optimum spacing, timely weeding, and application of soil ameliorant like lime or gypsum at the rate of 2 to 4 tons per hectare if the soil pH is above 5.8 can control occurrence of diseases. Next mechanism is by chemical control. Spraying of carbendazim at the rate of 2 gram per liter of water or copper oxychloride at the rate of 4 gram per liter of water and mencozeb at the rate of 5 gram per liter of water is recommended for disease management in jute. Next is about the harvesting practice. Harvesting usually starts from June to September between 120 days to 150 days depending on the sowing time as well as varieties. Harvesting of the crop at pre bud or bud stage give best quality fiber. However, the yield are low. Harvesting is done by cutting off the plant at or close to the ground level with surf sickles. In flooded lands, the plants are uprooted and then the roots are cut off when the stem are on the banks. The harvested plants are left in the field for 2-3 to three days for the leaves to set. Now let's see what is rating in jute. Rating is a process by which the fiber in the bark get loosened by dipping the bundle in water and then separated from the woody stalk. Rating is best done at 34 degrees Celsius. If fiber comes out easily from wood on pressure from the thumb and finger, rating is considered complete. Rating is completed between 12 to 16 days depending upon the climatic condition and fiber is extracted from the woody part of the stem. Next, we will see how extraction should be done. Fiber should be extracted from the retted stalk gently, keeping the stalk in water. Beating can be done to extract fiber, however, it reduces fiber quality. Extraction done separately from its root give cleaner jute fiber. Next, we will see about the yield potential. The national average is 1.3 tons of fiber per hectare. However, with improved packages of practices, it is possible to get about 2 to 2.5 tons of fiber yield per hectare from improved varieties. If the seed is produced, it may yield about 0.4 to 0.5 tons in case of white jute and 0.25 to 0.30 tons per hectare in case of Tosa and Jude. Now coming to the conclusion. 
development of advanced technologies for yield enhancement at lower cost and successful dissemination of this technology can effectively bridge the gap between researcher and farmer level. There is also a definite need of popularization campaign on various advanced technologies for enhancing the income generation, thereby improving the standard of living of resource poor youth farmers.